you giving me my full recording time? Why aren't you telling me how long I've got left to record? That's very annoying. Hello, I'm back. It's been a while. If you are wondering why I've been away for so long, I'm going to tell you. If you don't care, skip ahead like 30 seconds. So, long story short, it's been a really weird couple of months. I've had a lot of PhD stress that kind of boiled over, followed by losing my dad without any warning very suddenly, which has essentially punched a man-sized hole in me. So, uh, yeah, not doing great, but really wanted to do more YouTube videos. So, I'm doing another YouTube video. Thank you so much to everybody who's been giving me so much support. It has meant the world to me. I love you. It's cold in the UK right now, and when it gets cold on this windswept little rock, all people do is talk about how cold it is. I can't believe how cold it is. Can you imagine it being this cold about three months ago? What, in the summertime? No, funnily enough, I can't. Haven't the night started drawing in? Oh, there was frost on the ground last night, and it's almost like it's winter again. So, because I possess a huge number of woolly clothes, I thought, seeing as it is now minus five, I decided that I would see how effective my Viking reenactment clothes are at keeping out the chill. So I did just that, and I went for a cold walk, and it was quite nice. So those of you who are unaware, I have moved to York from Edinburgh, so if you see me around town in York, feel free to say hi. And York has a large field called the Knaves Mire, and originally it was a big common piece of land that people could go on and use it for grazing and for drying their laundry or bleaching their linens or whatever you needed to use it for. Nowadays it's half a giant field that people use for picnicking and dog walking and yoga and whatever else healthy people do outside. And the other half is York's race course where they hold big race meetings and they do all the important horse races that happen. I don't really know it. I think it's probably borderline animal abuse quite frankly. But there we go. What do I know? And it's not very far from where I'm living, so I figured I would go for a walk on the Knavesmire and walk through the grass and see how my Viking clothes fare. So layering up in my Viking kit is a pretty quick and easy process. It's not like uh, I have complicated dresses and pins and brooches and that sort of thing to put in. It's masculine clothing, which basically for the last 2,000 years in Northern Europe has meant a top and a pant. Which is kind of unfair, considering feminine clothing for the last 2,000 years in Northern Europe has been significantly more complicated to put on than that. So, men, if you're ever wondering why it takes women longer to get ready, it's because your clothes are designed to be put on by an idiot, um, basically. That means that it takes me significantly less time to get ready than if I were wearing, say, an apron dress being held up with a couple of brooches. Uh, all I have to do is chuck on a tunic, and I'm effectively decent enough to walk around outside in Viking Age terms. So, starting from the lower layers, I am wearing a pair of linen braids, my big baggy Viking Age underpants. These are pretty common things throughout the medieval period. They look a little bit like the Roman brachii, those short breeches that you see Roman soldiers wearing. Uh, on top of that, I am wearing my linen under tunic, and I call it a linen under tunic. It is just a linen tunic. The idea of it being underwear and that if people can see it, it's obscene is kind of anachronistic, but it's made of nice washed linen, so it's lovely and soft against the skin. And then on top of that, I am wearing my big wool Viking pants, my big nice, it's it's like a suiting weight wool. It's a lovely fine wool, but it's quite warm, uh, and they're made with a few yards of wool, so they're pretty big, they're pretty baggy, they should do a good job of insulating. Over those, I am wearing a pair of beautiful Nalbin socks made by my friend Jen. Nice one, Jen. Uh, they're actually based on a find from York, so they're based off a local find, and they're made of a beautiful quite oily wool, so hopefully that'll keep my feet fairly snug and fairly dry if it's damp underfoot. Wrapped around them are my leg wraps, and leg racks, leg racks, reg, reg, leave me alone, I'm bereaved. My leg wraps are um, beautifully dyed by my friend Carrie, who dyed them with, I think, my, uh, was it Woden Weld? I think it was Woden Weld, to get that lovely green colour. 
and they basically function as compression socks, but they also stop my baggy pants from flapping everywhere, and that takes a couple of minutes to get right, so if you're in a rush, maybe don't choose the baggy pants. On top of my linen under tunic, I'm wearing my beautiful wool tunic that was made for me by the guys at Old Craft Wool and they have just relocated from Russia to Georgia and they set up their looms and they've reset up their business. Brilliant bunch of guys doing really really good work in really difficult circumstances so Old Craft Wool, thank you very much, my tunic's amazing and hopefully we'll get them on to talk about their work at some point when it's it's okay and, and doable. This isn't a sponsorship thing, they're just really cool people doing really cool work. Highly recommend. Then, over everything else, I'm wearing my cloak. <clears throat> I wanted to try my hat. I have a pillbox hat based off uh, an example found in Friesland, uh, but I couldn't find it. I'm not sure where it is. I've lost it in the move. Similarly, I have my nice pink mittens based off an Icelandic find. I couldn't find those. So instead, I'm just wearing my green wool cloak clasped with a brooch based off uh, a find from the Galloway Horde, which was found in the west of Scotland. <coughs> and excavated by my friend Andy, and um, a pair of leather gloves, because we're pretty sure that they were using leather to make gloves in the period for people like smiths and people who needed hardier gloves than just the standard pair of woolen ones. And I really didn't want my hands to freeze. So I picked a perfect day for it, it's grey, it's foggy, and it's minus five degrees. And I know there are going to be people in the comments who are like, minus five? Well, I live in Canada and it gets to minus 40. Or like, I live in Japan and it gets to minus 70. I don't care. If water is freezing, it's cold. All right? It's not going to do anything else the lower down the temperature scale it goes. It's just going to be awful quicker. So, stop it. If you want to pay my airfare to somewhere where it's minus 30 and put me up somewhere for free, so that I can test it out in an even colder temperature? Drop me a line. I popped out in my... Oh, I forgot. I'm wearing turn shoes. I'm wearing my nice turn shoes. <clears throat> They're very simple. I made them. They're fine. They do the job. They're not based off a specific fine necessarily, but they're a very generic kind of turn shoe made out of one piece of leather wrapped around, sewn up the side um, with a little bit of a... Of, um, vamp stripe decoration in red silk up the fronts and with a separate sole. So they're fine, they've been beeswaxed and f animal fatted, so they're pretty waterproof, they'll do the job okay, hopefully. Let's go. So I went outside and the first thing that you notice when you walk out of your house in turn shoes is turn shoes are not designed for tarmac. So tarmac is very hard, cold, and it, it really shows up the gravel. So after stabbing myself through the sole of the foot several times on pieces of gravel, I got to the Knavesmire where I was greeted with freezing fog, frosty ground, and uncut grass, which is great because that's what I needed. And after about 10 minutes of tramping, I got to the Knavesmire and I was fine, absolutely fine. I looked a little bit like an evil wizard, but I kind of dig that look. I figured I'd just go for a walk up to the end of the Knavesmire and back, and that took me about half an hour at the speed I was going and with filming. So we trudged along, and to be honest with you, at no point was I really cold. My core was perfectly fine, my arms were perfectly fine, my legs were fine, even though they were wearing much thinner wool than what was used for my tunic. It did just as good a job, so I was perfectly comfortable. Like, at no point did I really suffer any ill effects from the cold. I did an experiment, very scientific experiment, where I took off my hood to see if my ears got cold, and incredibly, almost as though that's how basic physics worked, my ears got cold. So, after a few minutes of my ears being cold, I put my hood on again to see what would happen, and amazingly, my ears warmed up. I know. Fascinating stuff. There's a PhD in that somewhere, if any of you would like to take my research, my very scientific research, and expand it. It's yours, take it. So, I, I was absolutely fine. The only thing that wasn't functioning quite as well as it could have done was the cloak. Like, I say my ears were warm. They weren't toasty comfy warm. They were okay. They weren't freezing cold or going numb or anything like that. But if I had a thicker cloak or if it had a 
pile weave on it, like you see in a lot of the um, the Icelandic examples that we have of amazing raw wool woven into the cloth of a cloak. That would have been fantastic. I would have been super snuggly, super comfy. Um, but I didn't have that. I just had my I, what I would call like a medium weight or like a heavy suiting weight tweed. Harris tweed. It's not from Harris, it's from Lewis, but still. It was absolutely fine. I had no problems. I was walking across uncut grass. I was walking through frozen mud and I could feel every bump in the road because of the turn shoes, but this isn't a turn shoe thickness test. This is a clothing performing in the cold test. And the th the, th the shoes weren't great. Um, my feet were noticeably cold after about 10 minutes, so if I'd stuffed them with some straw, or if they were made of a thicker leather perhaps, but even then, I wear Blundstone boots as my modern boots, and your feet get cold in those after like half an hour of walking around in the, in the freezing cold, so... Mm, I don't know. Maybe like an extra layer of wool in the sock, like if I'd worn a second pair of socks, um, or like a pair of foot wraps, just like a pair of cloth foot wraps, that might have been might have been a vast improvement. Um, but, like, it was fine. I wasn't worried that my toes were going to fall off cold. I was just like, ooh, a bit nippy. The gloves worked absolutely fine. In fact, genuinely, this is kind of a, kind of a no-brainer, but it turns out that wool viking clothes keep you quite warm when it's freezing outside. We have an example of a hood that goes one step further, and it's a mantle rather than a hood, I would say. And it's from Skjoldham in Norway, and it has two braided ties, one either side of the face opening. And that implies that you can tie them across your face. Sorry, that was really bad for anyone lip reading. That implies that you can tie them across your face to close up the hood. And closing the hood up from, like, round here to over here does improve things slightly. Like, it, it closes more of your face off from the wind and keeps you a little bit warmer. So, yeah, I've got a Skjoldham mantle somewhere. Um, I'm not sure where it is at the minute, but I should attach the braids that I made to it and then do another one of these with that. Um, the problem with doing one of these tests is I don't know where all of my kit is, so, like, all of the heavy weather kit that I would love to test is somewhere house moves. They're fantastic. But apart from that, I was fine. So after about half an hour, 45 minutes, I started wandering back and I was walking into the wind on the way back. So I closed the hood up a little bit and felt no ill effects whatsoever. The wind was blowing pretty cold with the wind chill. It was like minus six, seven. I was fine. I was absolutely comfy. No problem at all. Now, if I'd been wading through knee deep snow, maybe I'd have felt things worse. But this was purely to see how it dealt with the just the, the physical low temperatures of the day. And I'm pretty sure I was a lot more comfortable and a lot snugglier than most of the people walking past me in puffer jackets. Like, synthetic fibres can be great. I mean, they're not. They're awful and they're poisoning the planet. But wool is just the best if it's cold. Wool is the best material out there if you're cold. Like... It just is. It's so good, and it breathes, and it traps the warm air. Oh, it's just great. And if it gets wet, then it dries really fast, and it's still warm even when it's wet. It's just the best. God, I love wool. Man, I love wool. This video is sponsored by Nidhogger Mead. Nidhogger Mead is an independent meadery based in the beautiful East Riding of Yorkshire, just outside the city of York. And not only are they based in Yorkshire, they source as many of their ingredients from Yorkshire as possible. They don't import their honey, which some meaderies do, which kind of flabbergasts me, because, you know, my mother has a beehive in her garden. If you need honey, like, give her a buzz. <laughs> Robot. Anyway, Nidhogger's Mead is award-winning stuff. I made a video about it a few months ago. I know the guys that run it. They're reenactors. They're nerds. They're super cool. Their mead tastes nice. And if you go to this website and you put in this code, you will get a discount on your mead purchase. So, go there and buy Nidhogger Mead. It's the mead you need. Yes, indeed. When do I get paid? 
So, to conclude, I guess everything worked really well. It's kind of boring when that happens, isn't it? Like, I, I didn't find myself freezing to death and my nose went numb and all of my fingers fell off due to frostbite. No, I was, I was fine. Turns out, yeah, it, it just works really well. So, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed listening to me rabbit on for a quarter of an hour about how Viking clothes are good at keeping the cold out. <laughs> Kel surprise. Um, but yeah. Till next time, we'll have a draw. Bye for now. In case anyone's wondering, yes, absolutely did paint this cabinet. Not this one. Didn't paint that. It's got windows. <laughs>